So over the last few years, several studies have identified and confirmed that a proportion of patients with advanced prostate cancer harbor genetic alterations in key genes for the DNA repair pathway, particularly in those genes involved in homologous recombination repair. We know that tumors that have impaired homologous recombination repair are a good target for treatment with PARP inhibitors. And that was the trigger for the clinical development of these compounds in prostate cancer. In the PROFOUND trial, which is the randomized phase trial of Olaparib in advanced prostate cancer, we screened patients from all over the world based on a targeted next generation sequencing panel using tumor tissue samples from patients, either from their original diagnostic biopsies or in a small number of patients, metastatic biopsies that were conducted for the trial. In the profound study, we observed that those patients receiving Olaparib had a prolonged time to radiographic progression and also a prolonged overall survival time compared to those who received a second hormonal agent that was the control arm. And that was true primarily for patients in cohort A of the trial, that was the key cohort, and that included patients with mutations either in BRCA1, BRCA2, or ATM. However, subgroup analysis have showed later that patients with BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations are the ones deriving the most benefit. So in the PROFOUND trial, as well as in other phase two trials of Olaparib and other PARP inhibitors, we have seen consistently responses among patients who have mutations beyond BRCA1 and BRCA2. However, when you analyze those as a group, clearly BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutated tumors are the ones where we see the biggest benefit. In patients with ATM or CDK12 mutations that are very common in prostate cancer, we have seen some patients responding pretty well and some of them achieving good benefit. But actually, when you put them together as a group, there seems that the benefit is relatively short and not a significant difference in the overall study. On the other hand, we also have an issue with patients that have mutations in very um, uncommon genes or, or genes that are very uncommonly altered, such as PALV2, RAT51, RAT54, that we know from preclinical studies and also from clinical studies that respond very well to PARP inhibitors. But because these mutations are so uncommon, the number of patients in the study are very, very small and it's very difficult to do gene per gene analysis for these subsets. I think that the biggest change in clinical practice we're gonna be seeing as a consequence of the PROFOUND trial is the implementation of genomic testing based on tumor samples or liquid biopsies, but the genomic stratification of prostate cancer patients to identify those patients who could be good candidates to receive this therapy that is not going to replace the standard of care, but it's actually be an additional option of therapy for some of these patients with lethal prostate cancer. So over the last few months at several Congresses, very exciting data has been presented. At ESMO, we have seen on the one side, the confirmation of the profound results in terms of overall survival, uh, brief updates uh, in the development of other PARP inhibitor trials. And obviously the biggest uh, update so far is the FDA approval of Olaparib and Rucaparib in the US, and also the positive recommendation of the EMA CHMP for Olaparib in Europe for patients with BRCA1 and BRCA2 alterations, which suggests that probably we're gonna be seeing the drug approved in Europe in the, in, in, in the next few months. Also at ESMO, there were some interesting abstracts being presented in prostate cancer. For example, Professor James provided a very interesting update in the long-term data for abiraterone as a treatment for metastatic hormone naive prostate cancer from the stampede. It was very reassuring to see the long-term benefit of adding abiraterone to ADT in those patients. And then there were also a couple of presentations of phase one trials of new drugs, one being a, an, an oral tubulin inhibitor that may be uh, an alternative to taxis in the future, and the other very interesting, uh, uh, a new drug using the bite technology and, and a dual antibody targeting 
proteins of the prostate cancer, such as PSMA, and introducing drugs that will induce an immune response. These are very early days for these compounds, but it's very interesting to see this data on what can be the next generation of drugs for prostate cancer.